Welcome to the CyberLife Podcast, where we help you learn cybersecurity best practices, give you a weekly update on the latest cybersecurity news, and share valuable career advice. Hey everyone, it's Ken. In today's episode, we have a special guest, Hugh Shepard. Hugh's going to be talking about living abroad in your tech career. So Hugh is actually a freelance technology consultant. He's got over 25 years of experience in IT and telecommunications. And for about the past eight years or so, he's been really focused on the cybersecurity realm. He's a founder and principal consultant at HSJR Global Solutions, which is a global consultancy firm. And essentially, he does things like advisory services, uh, does cybersecurity research, general cybersecurity, security awareness training, anything around information technology, as well as things around emerging tech. So he kind of covers a whole gamut for his different clients across the globe. And as as he was younger, he actually served in the U.S. military, in the U.S. Army, and he worked as a radio systems operator, which kind of sparked the bug of his entire tech career. He actually considers himself a perpetual newbie, even though he's got a ton of experience, because he's always trying to learn something new like many of us out there. And since 2016, so filming this in 2023, so about uh, seven years or so. Hugh's actually lived overseas outside the U.S. with his wife and child, and he's done a lot of different international development projects. So he's lived in places like Nepal, he's lived in India, as well as a, a number of other countries across Southeast Asia and Europe. He's visited a lot of places around the world, including th places like Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Cambodia, Canada, Australia, the U.K., Netherlands, France, et cetera, et cetera. So he's been a lot of places seen a lot of things and he's got a lot of wisdom for you. Currently, as I mentioned, he and his family live in Thailand and he finds that kind of cool since he's originally from Ohio, which is one of the states here in the U.S. if you're not from the U.S., but essentially it's very cold there and, he, and it's kind of uh, isolated as far as culture wise usually. And so for him to live in Thailand is kind of a big deal for Hugh. So without further ado, like I said, Hugh's going to dive into both his tech background, but also living abroad and some of the considerations you need to keep in mind. So that way, if you're kind of you kind of got that itch, right? You're stuck in that cubicle. You, you don't want to return to office. You want to actually go live your life and live it in another place. Hugh's got a lot of wisdom. And by the way, bringing Hugh back on to talk about some of the specific resources that you can use for living abroad, you know, or that you can use, you know, as part of living abroad. So Listen to this episode, learn a little bit from Hugh about living abroad, and then be sure to check out a future episode where Hugh dives into some of the actual resources he's used or that he recommends for those that are looking to live outside of their current country. So again, without further ado, let's jump right in and learn from Hugh. So thanks again for coming on the show, Hugh. Today, we're going to be talking about living abroad in your tech career. So Hugh actually is joining us from Thailand right now. And a lot of cybersecurity professionals I'm noticing are kind of, they're, they're tired, especially post COVID. They're tired of, of being stuck in the office, even though a lot of companies are saying return to work or else you're fired. Um, people just kind of feel more empowered now to take control of their own lives and, and really experience life. And uh, I think there's a guy in, on LinkedIn that says like, try life on or something like that. Um, I forget his Maurice or something like that is his name. But anyways, um, I just want to, I just want to dive right in Hugh. Like what are, what are okay. some of the unique advantages that living abroad can offer to individuals that are pursuing a career in tech? Well, uh, overall, Ken, I'll say living abroad uh, gives you opportunity to become a more, more well-rounded professional, you know, more well-rounded tech uh, professional specifically uh you know you're you're getting exposed to different markets different environments uh different perspectives uh you know even though the underlying technology is going to be the same you know uh but you know the way people kind of think about things or apply things in their in their environment may be different and also um it gives you the opportunity to share what you know you know uh I, I'm, I'm overseas. Uh, I'm here in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, and I've been in South Asia uh, in, in Nepal, where it wasn't maybe as uh, the, the infrastructure wasn't as developed. So they were definitely interested in hearing my perspective and my experience uh, coming from the West, coming from the States, and just seeing you know how it can be applied in their in their environment, in their situation. So, I mean, you and I both know cybersecurity careers and any tech career, really, it's, it's it can be very demanding, like on your time, resources, et cetera. So just 
you know, like how, how can someone balance the demands of whatever career in tech, whether it's cybersecurity or not, with some of the, the challenges and also the opportunities that, that they're going to experience living in a foreign country? Uh, sure. Um, you know, it's going to vary, you know, and I'm going to, I'll speak from my own personal experience. Um, you know, I had to set boundaries because, you know, being in Asia, uh, being roughly, you know, 12 hours ahead of the States, you know, so, you know, when it's daytime in the States, it's nighttime here. And so uh, I had to set a boundary, you know, far as like, uh, you know, not making myself available to, you know, be on calls or or whatever, even though, you know, I, I, I did initially. <laughs> and, you know, you can't, you know, it, burning a candle on both ends it definitely became, oh, sorry about that, <laughs> definitely became exhausting. So, um, you know, again, you got you to gotta set some boundaries and use strategies, be it, you know, time block. You know, like, hey, I'm only going to uh, work, uh, you know, be online for the next two hours or from like one to two or whatever. But, uh, you know, you have to, you know, make sure that you're not over overworking yourself because it happens in the States as well. But it definitely can happen abroad because, you know, again, in my personal situation, I feel like, you know, you wanted to stay I wanted to stay connected, didn't want to miss out on things. So I would put myself out there and, and be willing to get up at two or stay up till three in the morning on calls. But, you know, it's not sustainable. It's no way to live. Yeah, I think you brought up a good point there. I mean, burnout is such a huge issue. And I think, as you mentioned, setting boundaries is such a critical thing, especially if you're going to be in a different time zone than a lot of the people you're going to be working with. So you mentioned that Paul and, and the infrastructure there is, you know, in, in a lot of places around the world is a lot mm -hmm. different than the Western world. You know, we're, yeah. we're very fortunate, especially here in the U.S., even though people complain, but we're we're actually very fortunate with the things we have access to. So I want to ask right. you, like, like, how do you stay updated? I mean, of course, the Thailand infrastructure is different than Nepal, but how, how do you right. keep like keep abreast of like industry trends, you know, developments, et cetera, when you're not specifically like living in a, you know, quote unquote, traditional tech hub area? And you're also mm -hmm. maybe facing the the impact of Internet outage wherever you are. So like how. Like, how do you personally stay updated? And, and also, like, what would you recommend for those out there that are maybe looking at some areas where maybe the Internet isn't, you know, or, or even the power isn't reliable mm -hmm. like like it is here in the U.S.? OK, yeah, sure. Um, well, one of the main things uh, that I uh, started doing again since I've been abroad is uh, reading books <laughs> you know, and actual physical, you know, hard copy books uh, because, you know, um, one, I enjoy them better, and uh, also there's no dependency on uh, is my Kindle charged or is my you know am I going to be able to download this this uh, book onto my phone or whatever. So you know, uh, have an opportunity to read books again has been helpful. Uh, then you know, trying to stay connected, you know, especially when it comes to the news uh, or uh, you know events happening in, in tech and cybersecurity. Uh, there's a ton of sites out there. However, you know, I know Sands uh, Storm Center is one that uh, I'll try to like stay on top of and, and listen to those podcasts. Uh, and of course, your your podcast, Ken, is like uh, one of my main go tos as well. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm, you know, not to keep name dropping other stuff, but uh, you know, uh, like Security Week. Uh, but again, there's there's tons of them out there. Uh, just whatever your preference is. Uh, and another thing that's been really, really helpful for me, for me uh, is just staying connected, you know, be it through, you know, there's tons of organizations, be it through, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just name a few, like, you know, Cybersity, Cybrary, uh, uh, Blacks and Cyber, you know, these organizations are global and they have a uh, international presence, you know, even though they are, you know, based in the U.S., their membership and their communities spans the globe, you know, when, you know, in these discord and, and uh, Slack communities. So being a part of those, you know, even if it's just, you know, you know, uh, just popping in occasionally, like just seeing what people are talking about, seeing what some of the posts are about has been very helpful. And also, uh, you know, you know, working in IT, we all have certs. You know, and there's these organizations that provide the certs, especially in places like here in Thailand, they have chapters like ISACA, uh, CompTIA, ICS Squared. So getting involved in 
uh, those organizations. You know, again, they have conferences nearby. You know, check them out. Uh, actually, matter of fact, I'm going to a conference next week in Singapore. Uh, cybersecurity something Asia. Uh, I feel bad. I shouldn't know, <laughs> but yeah, you know. But that's you know, it's it's, it's a little bit of hustle. You know, it's a little bit trying to stay engaged and, and stay busy, but, you know, it's worth it, you know, especially if you're, you know, serious about your career and serious about, uh, you know, IT and cybersecurity, you know, it's it's not a static thing. It's it's constantly changing. You got to stay on top of it. So I want to say I, I appreciate the shameless uh, plug of the podcast. So listen to <laughs> Hugh. He's he's an expert on on that type of thing. So, I mean, do you, do you feel that? <laughs> You, do you feel that living abroad has has helped accelerate your career, or do you have an example of like maybe someone you know that that you feel because they lived abroad, it seemed to maybe expand you know some of the opportunities they had in their career? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely you know speak for myself on this one uh, because uh, it, it changed my mindset. You know, it was very uh, uh, kind of awakening for me when it comes to career and when it comes to like you know quality of life and my approach to work uh you know i i lived in the dc area uh for 15 years uh you know as an adult working there and i kind of limited limited myself to the dc area you know uh, which you know it wasn't bad i mean I enjoyed living there but when it came uh, it came to work and, and career you know if it wasn't like beltway or dc uh, dmv as we we call it was <laughs> if it wasn't like related to that i just really you know like didn't think it was something i would pursue or uh, attainable but since i've been abroad again i had to kind of reinvent myself and, and actually i won't say kind of i did have to reinvent myself i had to you know take off those limitations and be more entrepreneurial and think more like uh be, be freelancing uh being a freelancer and uh you know um Basically, uh, uh, I can't think of it. I was trying to put in a sports analogy, but like create my own shot, you know, even though I can't play basketball worth a guy. But, you know, <laughs> when it comes to, you know, uh, like just kind of make my own way in my career instead of just kind of like, uh, you know, accepting the standard kind of, hey, nine to five, go to the office, then go home. So now, um, you know, it's been, you know, I've started my own uh freelance company, um, basically a one man uh, consulting firm. And it's been invigorating because, you know, I'm, I'm deciding on the areas I want to like focus on, you know, it's, it's enjoyable, you know, uh, you know, yeah, there's a lot of work involved, but it's, it, it's fulfilling and uh, I'm doing it, you know, for myself and for my family. And uh, it's been, it's been great, you know, and, you know, and, and I'll speak of another uh, gentleman I know, uh, who's here in Thailand? He's in another city. Uh, you know, I know he he was uh, like prior military, like myself, and uh, was in the states. But now he, you know, he's he's doing other things. He's retired, but now he's still engaged in uh, IT and doing a lot of AI stuff. And I'm like, wow, you know, this guy is just really getting into AI really deep, and just you know, it's it's like he's you know you know, reinvigorated himself. So, you know, uh, I, ho I hope I'm answering a question. I'm kind of all over the place, but yeah, it's been great. It, it, you know, it's just been kind of uh, reawakening being abroad, get, getting out of my old normal environment back in the States, back in DC. Back, back in DC. So what were some of the, maybe some of the cultural challenges that, that you and, and or your family faced, like when you guys first moved to, to Thailand? Well, you know, my wife is, uh, you know, she grew up abroad. You know, she's American. She's born in Brooklyn, but she, you know, grew up like, uh, you know, in other parts of the world. So it's OK for her. Now I'm from Ohio. <laughs> and if we couldn't drive there, we weren't going. And and this is also for speaking of a guy who uh, got lost in Springfield, Ohio, going around the block. So <laughs> for me to move abroad and go to, you know, a country where I didn't speak the language and I stood out, you know, being, you know, African-American in, in, in Nepal, in Catman Dupu, excuse me, Catman Du, Nepal, I kind of stood out. So just kind of getting used to not having the normal comforts of home. 
having to deal with, you know, uh, uh, power cuts, you know, where you're without power for like eight to 12 hours a day was like unheard of, you know, and then there's certain things like, uh, you know, uh, I found in, in South Asia, uh, and, and I'm sure it's other places here, you know, overseas as well, staring at someone isn't considered necessarily rude, necessarily rude. <laughs> and, you know, and, and at first I was like, why are you staring at me? And, uh, and, and but uh, I was someone enlightened me and said like, well, you're probably, you know, there is curiosity and you're probably the only black man they've ever seen. <laughs> so <laughs> like, just why don't you just say hello and, you know, and see, yeah, you know, see how it goes. And, and once I was uh, enlightened to that and would speak to, folks and say hi I, I i became the most popular guy in my neighborhood in in Kathmandu. i probably could have won the uh, mayor if i decided to run for mayor can <laughs> you know i mean the you're you're still young hugh right you can still run for mayor in uh, nepal if I, you want I, to man. <laughs> i still have a chance i still have yeah, a chance yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you know but you you actually bring up a good point there i think you know here in the u.s like I mean, anyone listening to this in the U.S., you know, like someone stares at you like it, we're throwing down. Right. But but yeah, in yeah. a lot of other places around the world, not just in Southeast Asia, it's it's just normal. You know, if you if you look at other countries as well here in the U.S., we're we've got to think about space. Like if you're yeah. up on me, like I'm yeah. going to throw a punch probably. Right. But yes. if you've never been like if you're like you originally, right, where you grew up in Ohio and, and I grew yeah. up in a northern state, I live in Texas now, but. Like there's just a thing about personal space and things like that, that in other countries, it's just part of the culture where right. that stuff doesn't exist, you know? And so I think that, yeah. I think you brought up a good point, not directly, but you kind of, you know, uh, alluded to it is if you're going to go live somewhere else, you have, you, you have to be mindful of the way of life there because yeah. it doesn't mean that there, uh, you know, that someone's if, a good example, I think is, um, you know, for those that know me, know my wife's black and here in the U S mm -hmm. there's, there's areas that are very, um, let's just call them very pale. Right. Cause I'm a pale white guy. Like very, <laughs> there's a lot of areas where there's not a lot of diversity, like growing up, yeah, yeah, there yeah. really wasn't diversity where I grew up. Right. There was, you know, there was mm -hmm. some Latino, there was, um, the occasional black person that, you mm -hmm. know, there's only, um, two or three that I remember in all of my school years. Mm -hmm. And, and that's not saying like, the, like the stuff that I see in this, and not, not by the way, if you're Southern, listen to this, I'm not knocking you. Don't right. send me hate mail, but there's some things that are accepted in the South part of the U S that are not accepted in, in the Northern part of the U S where I, where I grew up at. Right. So that the type of stuff, and, and you can read between the lines on that. If you're from the U S you, you, you know what I'm talking about. We're not going to go into that on this podcast, but anyways, right. I, I didn't have a lot of diversity, but what what you experience in those areas, even in the U.S., where where people just don't see, you know, all you see is like pale white people. Like you, you're gonna glance, right? You're gonna glance at right. someone else, and it's not like, oh my god, you know, there's someone that you know. It's not usually like that. Ninety nine percent of the time, there's always a jerk here and there, but for the right. most part, it's, it's not like that. And that, that's, I guess, the point I'm trying to make here is that it's the same way in other places around the world as well. And and there's places, um, I mean. I've been a pale white guy going to some places and I stand out. Right. So <laughs> right. it's, you know, and, and again, it's, you know, there's, there's a different culture there, a different way of life. And it is not always most, most people, most human beings are good, right. They're good. Yes. They're just trying to live their That's lives. True. They're friendly. They're, they're, you know, a smile is universal. Um, you know, yep. as is, oh, yeah. as, as is cursing, you know, as is, you know, like a lot of things are, you know, people understand certain things and, you know, and that goes across cultures, but I, I think the key thing to keep in mind for anyone looking to live abroad, no matter where that is, is it's going to be a different type of culture there. And, yes. and you just need to get yourself familiar with that and understand that the most people are not out to get you. They're not trying to, you know, harm you or be rude or anything. You know, it's just, it's just, they may be like, Hey, I've never seen, you know, a black right. guy like you. Right. You know, it's just just yeah. the way it is. And a lot, especially in, in Asian countries, I've, I've heard from a lot of um, people that are from all sorts of different races and backgrounds and things. But um, yeah, anyways, we yep. could go on for a whole thing about that. We also could have another episode if you all want. Let us know in the comments if you want Hugh to talk about all his times getting lost while driving around the block. Um, and uh, you know, I think we could do a whole episode on that. It's, oh yeah, so at least like there's a whole episode there, man. A trilogy. <laughs> yeah. um, so you know, so so moving abroad isn't like you book, you know, travel with a travel agent. You go on a quick vacation or a cruise or whatever. 
there's probably mm-hmm. some legal and logistical challenges. Do you mind just sharing, like just focusing on Thailand, you know, cause you guys have been there a couple of years. So yeah. do you, just focus on that. Like what are, what are some of the, again, so quick disclaimer, this is not legal advice. You need to like no. look up this stuff yourself, but he's going to give you a little exactly. insight, but what are some yeah. of like the legal and even logistical challenges that, that you and your family face going from the DMV or the DC area for those that don't know what that is um, over to Thailand? Like what were some of the, some of the basic things that, that you had to get in place and maybe some of the challenges you faced that you didn't consider ahead of time? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, uh, you know, it's definitely a uh, heavy lift. It's a, it's a, you know, it's not easy just, you know, relocating your life to the other side of the world, to another country. Uh, we were l- fortunate because my wife works in development and this uh, the reason for the move was was work related. So, you know, a lot of the logistics as far as moving home, well, furniture and stuff like that was done through her her employer. However, it still required, um, um, uh, uh, well, I was lucky like on the first move. Well, it, it, she went abroad, uh, she went over there for a couple of weeks prior uh, to look for a place and everything. And so had that settled, but uh, you know, that was helpful, but you're not always gonna have that luxury. You know, when we came to Thailand, it was just like, okay, um, you know, the, put all our stuff in the boat, you know, they're going to, because, you know, there's no air travel uh, for a lot of big stuff or, you know, or at least the company's not going to pay for it, you know, because it's too expensive. And then, you know, once you get in country, you're at the hotel, you know, you're in there for, you know, a few weeks, a month or whatever until you actually find a home. And then that's when you get like, okay, let's get all our stuff brought in, do all of that, you know, and get settled in. And then, you know, uh, if you're on a project, you know, if you're on the, uh, especially on the advance, the initial people being sent over, you, you got to find the office. You got to find the, uh, you got to get the uh, IT infrastructure set up. You got to get their, you know, office furniture. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot. You know, the things that uh, I, I just normally took for granted, like, oh, I'm a, I'm a new job. I show up, they give me a laptop and I go to work. Uh, no, you know, this is you know, from scratch, you know, and then not to mention the legal aspects of it, you know, there's visas, you know, you just can't show up in a country, uh, <laughs> you know, as a foreigner, like, hey, I'm here, you know, you can, you know, depends on the country, but it's probably it's going to be for a tourist visa, you know, it's, and maybe for 30 days. And, you know, again, I, I'm just speaking in general terms, definitely research on your own and, you know, determine, you know, depending on the country you're trying to visit or relocate to, to figure out the actual requirements. But I'm pretty certain it's going to require some, you know, uh, a visa uh, and then, you know, a uh, work visa, you know, that some, not all visas are created equal. Some visas allow, you know, your spouse to work, some, you know, some don't, you know, you just really have to do the research and figure it out. And then, you know, there's a, uh, there's a gray area these days, and again, uh, definitely research your country, you know, because of the uh, digital nomad type uh, lifestyle that a lot of people live these days. And, you know, and what, you know, if you're working, but the company that you work for is remote in the US or the UK, but you just happen to be uh, residing in, you know, whatever country it may be, you know, what are you required to have a visa you know who you know some some countries have a more defined understanding or more defined regulations on that others don't um you know again i'm not uh you know i'm not a u.n legal expert (laughs) and and i'm not a uh you know bottom line research on your own but uh yeah it's, it's it's not easy it's challenging and you know i could go on and on but the best advice I can give is, you know, do the research, know where you're going. If there's a lot of stuff that can be kind of uh, done and, 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 and taken care of prior to the move, do that, you know, or at least have some contacts or, or whatever uh, in country before you kind of just show up because uh, that's not a good idea. So really what you're saying is just just show up randomly and then say, I know Hugh and see what happens. <laughs> you you can do that, but you'll probably be on the next plane back home. <laughs> you know, I I have no power. 
so you know we talked br- very briefly about the you know the the return to office stuff earlier and so obviously it's a competitive market right now a lot of people looking for work people getting laid off etc you know and people with a lot of experience still looking for for jobs i mean the ghosting uh, fake jobs you know, all this yeah. stuff going on yes and of course the return to office which is a huge thing especially larger companies are trying to get your butt back in the seat so your creepy boss can you know stalk you oh i didn't say that sorry <laughs> um but how can a cybersecurity professional or any tech professional um you know software developer whatever how can they like actually say look yes you want me for this job but how can they position to get a remote position that then allows them to actually live abroad like is there kind of a maybe a process in your head and whether that's mm-hmm. maybe, Hey, can I work out of this location? Cause you know, a big company like Google has a lot of offices around mm-hmm. the world or, or let's, you know, so maybe, maybe the question is to, to two routes, Hugh, and whichever route, okay. or if you want to talk about both one is like, Hey, the company has other, you know, locations, like how would yep. you kind of like bring that idea up? And then, Hey, the company is only here in the U S how would you bring it up? Like, Hey, you should let me work from Thailand. Like what would, what would the Hugh approach be for those? Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Well, I think the best option, best approach would be find a company that is remote first. Uh, and I can't think of, I mean, there's there's a few out there because I've been researching it myself where they don't even necessarily have a physical office and they have a global uh, workforce. So it's like, hey, that's the norm in this company. So it, it, it's okay. You're in Thailand. Fine. I'm in the Philippines or I'm in the UK. It's okay. So if you are fortunate enough and you can find a company that is remote, remote first and they have the perfect position for you, then problem solved. Uh, definitely go that route. Uh, if not, if you're in a more kind of normal, uh, not normal, but uh, kind of, you know, the traditional type of company that has physical locations. Uh, however, if they have physical locations across the globe, that's helpful. Because then you can like, well, you know, yeah, I know I'm in the D.C. office of, you know, Google. However, you know, I I, want to live abroad for a couple of years or or whatever. Uh, I want to live in uh, Australia. And I know there's an office and and, and I'm just randomly throwing out companies and cities. (laughs) But, uh, you know, you say, hey, uh, we have the, the Sydney office. You know, can I? relocate to the Sydney office. I'm still on the team, you know, put together a plan, you know, on how, you know, uh, you'll know, be overlapping with, you know, if necessary, as far as overlapping, as far as with, uh, you know, any necessary meetings or whatever, you know, just put together a plan, you know, and kind of have it kind of well thought out and, and, and present that to your leadership. And that, yeah, I think that would help. Um, but, uh, but I, I will say this, the, the first thing you have to do is make sure you do good work. You know, make sure initially that you're a, um, a standout performer at your current role. You can't be, you know, don't be the guy who kind of half performs and then all of a sudden you want to move overseas. They're going to be like, uh, no, you know, you, <laughs> like we, we don't we don't trust you to just go upstairs, let alone across the globe. So, you know, make sure you're doing good work initially before you come present this grand plan to relocate to the other side of the world and, and then uh, then uh, I guess there's a third uh, route you know if you're in a company that doesn't have the uh, international presence you know and they more tradition they are more traditional one physical location or just you know a few locations in the physical locations in the states uh, again uh, I'll say have a plan have it mapped out for them to where when you present that to your leadership, they see how it's going to play out, you know, and you have an established track record of being a strong performer, uh, you know, uh, make concessions like, well, you know, hey, I'll I return every three months. You know, I'll, I'll work from the States every, you know, uh, you know, for a week, uh, you know, every three months or something like that. And that can that could even be the case with the other cup, like the, the quote unquote Google example company that I provided a second ago. So uh, to sum it up, again, it starts with doing a good work, have a history of being a high performer so that when you come in there with this this scheme <laughs> or with this plan that people, you know, will have faith in you that you will still be able to deliver and do good work and, and have it planned out. You know, uh, you know, having a plan helps, you know, uh, and it helps people uh, have a comfort level in, in, in this 
in this move that you want to do instead of having it, having it be kind of a half-baked thing. So hopefully that's useful. You know, I, I kind of didn't take either route uh, because I, I'm what they would refer to as the trailing spouse. So I uh, eventually had to resign my role and just kind of, I was for, yeah, oh yeah, that, I guess that's the fourth option. <laughs> if, you're, if your spouse is the breadwinner and they're, uh, you know, um, on an international pro uh, project, then you pretty much can just follow them and just start a new, start a new in a new location. So I'm going to be quiet now, kid. <laughs> All right. So there you go. So, so you learn, you, you learned it from Hugh first, two main, you know, a couple of main routes. Number one, be like Peter Gibbons in the movie office space and you'll get promoted and stuff. And then you can live overseas or number two, get a sugar <laughs> mama and, uh, and then yeah. you'll be awesome. Um, yeah, that, so <laughs> Hugh, Hugh, here in the U.S., we have a tendency, shocking, to to try to basically kill ourselves for, for money in a capitalist society, which, you know, good or bad, depending on who you ask. But when you moved abroad, you know, even, you know, even, you know, following your spouse, but like, how did your personal professional goals change or did they not change, you know, as you started living in Thailand? Uh, they changed significantly, you know, because definitely I had a... Uh, just kind of change in mindset. Uh, I reinvented myself. Um, became more entrepreneurial. You know, I was definitely, you know, I'm an older guy. You know, I, I, you know, so I, I'm used to like, the, you know, you go to work, go to the office Monday through Friday. You set a desk, you know, and and you do it for, you know, twenty years or thirty years. You know, maybe it, not that long, but you know, you do it for a few years or whatever. But, you know, now uh, living abroad made me also, you know, made me more entrepreneurial and more into quality of life, you know, uh, because the whole, you know, I, I was at a level there, you know, and no knock on D.C. and no knock on, you know, uh, you know, the corporate life and lifestyle in the States. But, you know, again, I'll speak for myself. It it got to a toxic level because i was just working and working working and became unhealthy getting away and and kind of like unplugging kind of a bit you know from being out of that uh that lifestyle was helped me appreciate things to the point where you know what you know um i don't have to you know work 50 60 hours a week i can only you know work 20 hours a week 30 hours a week and and then enjoy other things you know i'm in this country uh i've never been here before get out check it out walk around you know try to learn the language take a swimming lesson you know i need to learn how to swim i'm a terrible swimmer you know start taking, start learning something learn how to cook you know the local cuisine uh just experience life and i think that's been the kind of sea change in, in myself you know it's been you know uh, very beneficial and helpful because, you know, that's, that's no way to live, you know, the, the, the amount of stress and the pace that I was working and, and thinking I had to perform there when I was back home in the States, uh, wasn't, wasn't constructive and I wasn't happy. Uh, but now, you know, uh, you know, being abroad and, and, and be more entrepreneurial, more, you know, uh, working more as a freelancer. And also just saying, hey, you know, what else can I pursue? You know, I'm not limiting myself on like, well, I can only do, you know, certification and accreditation. I'm only, I'm only a GRC guy. Well, you know, I can do other things. You know, I, you know, I can put, uh, do some penetration testing. You know, it may not be the best penetration tester, but hey, you know, I, I'm enjoying a new aspect of cybersecurity, and it's making me a more well-rounded, stronger professional in my field. So again, I, I get chatty. I had a rock star energy drink. So hopefully I'm not too wired talking to you. <laughs> well, you know, for the rock star energy fans out there, uh, now they feel a little more connected to you, Hugh. Oh, yeah. uh, so, <laughs> so, so I want to ask you, you know, any, any final thoughts or advice around living, a, living abroad for the audience out there? Uh, sure. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to push it. You know, I'm going to say, Every, I, I recommend that everyone get the opportunity to experience working abroad, at least at some point in their life, in their career, even if it's for a week, you know, for a small project, 
or like myself for you know several years because it's it's it makes you more well-rounded you know uh you know it gives you opportunity to see things from a different perspective and you know and hopefully it'll make you more you know uh appreciate you know uh where you are in your career and you know and and, and the possibility of things that you can the other things you can do in your career you know um i i think it's a it, it's been ex- extremely beneficial for me and i think it's a, a good opportunity for you know just about anyone you know if you if you if you want to do it just give it a shot you know it, uh, definitely there's some a lot of upside to it Thanks for listening to the show. If you're looking to secure your business better or build up your cybersecurity career, then check us out over at cyberlife.tv. That's C-Y-B-E-R-L-I-F-E dot T-V.